First night, an environmental group has hit out at Jersey State, saying their solution to rid the island of sea lettuce is being ignored. Save Our Shoreline believe they've worked to create a discreet, ecologically friendly way to solve the problem. They claim growing native Jersey oysters in St Oban's Bay, where the seaweed is at its worst, will help. But they say they are now being forced to give up on the oyster trial as the government would rather spend half a million or more on a beach cleaning machine. Well, Charlie Frost is live on St Helier's waterfront for us. So, Charlie, just how bad is the problem there? Well, as you can see, it's a beautiful evening down here on the beach, but there is one thing blighting the coastline, this green stuff. And earlier, when the tide was low, the problem was a lot, lot worse. Where there should be golden sands, there was sea lettuce. Not exactly what dream beaches are made of, but there are solutions being put forward to try and get rid of the gunk. There's just disagreement over what will work. While campaigners are championing a more homegrown solution, the states are looking at to France. Well, I've been getting both sides of the sea lettuce story. It's green, it's smelly, and it's blanketing at this bay. It's sea lettuce, an issue which just isn't going away. Well, it's a bit of an eyesore. Um, I don't know what they can do to get rid of it, but the sooner they do something, the better. It puts me off, yeah. We travelled yesterday in the car to go to another beach because we didn't want to experience this. Or to... I'm... 99% sure I'd have, we'd all have more customers around here, yes, for certain. Without that sea lettuce, we would. And is it, you know, um, frustrating for you that it's such an issue here? Um, on some days, when it's rather, um, when it gets very hot and it's not very, it doesn't smell very nice, and then you get the holidaymakers coming up and they're asking the questions and why is it being taken back out and then being, and it all comes back in with the tide again, and yes, it is slightly frustrating. And it's not just businesses and beachgoers that suffer. Campaigners say it's affecting the environment as well. So how do you solve a problem like sea lettuce? So Save Our Shoreline three years ago approached the states of Jersey with uh, an, a wonderful solution from Tony Legg from Jersey Sea Farms, looking at using the Jersey native oyster, which is absolutely prolific in taking nitrates out of the water. By now we would have known whether that was going to work. It's a low-cost environmental solution with no impact on anyone else. But um, they've turned their backs on it. But this is a claim the Environment Minister refutes. Well, I would not say that we're not working with them and I'd like to see proposals come forward and we certainly would look at them. When it comes to oyster farming, I'm an, an ex-oyster farmer and I would welcome applications in the bay. Indeed, I've actually encouraged them to come forward with applications, whether that would be above the low water line or below the low water line. And there are things that can be done. The scene that we have behind me is not something that we like to look at. And certainly along with uh, Deputy Eddie Knoll, we're working as hard as we can to find a solution to this problem. So while this oyster idea floats, the States has got a plan and it involves a harvesting machine from France. Next month it's being brought over to Jersey for a trial. This machine will be a step to next season where we will see a specialist uh, Jersey machine hopefully working on these beaches. We don't believe it will work. It's not worked in France. Um, one of our members worked out it would need to run along at 24 miles per hour to actually gather enough sea lettuce to get out of the way. It's going to be horribly expensive. And even if we were able to use the sea lettuce for biofuel, we haven't got the plant set up yet to make it. So while there's disagreement over what the right solution is, it's clear all islanders hope that by next year, this bay will be looking less green and more golden. Well, the high tide may be covering the green issue at the moment, but when sea levels drop, more looks likely to arrive. And plenty of you have been getting in touch, telling us what you think of the problem and what you think should be done to get rid of the green weed. Pete Hobbs makes the point saying, what with the sewage outlets so nearby, who would eat the oysters anyway? While Mark Philip Jordan believes if the sea lettuce was at another beach, it would have been cleared quicker, saying perhaps if it was St Brellard's Beach covered in seaweed, it would be done straight away and finally Richie Swanton believes we just have to come to terms with it and live with it he says we live in an island an island is surrounded by sea seaweed lives in the sea we get seaweed we need to deal with it well thank you very much for all of your comments I'm sure this isn't the last we've seen of the sea lettuce issue indeed not Charlie for now thank you